Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 5.5, Completing the Square. And so this is based off of um, the section on taking square roots, the fact that if something was written like this, that it was so nice to just be able to take the square root of both sides, and you'd have plus or minus 2, and we'd subtract 5, and you'd have negative 5 plus or minus 2, which would be negative 3 and negative 7. And that was so nice to do because of the way this started out up here. And so if we could make the equations be written like that, then it's just kind of nice to solve them. So here's your steps on completing the square. So first of all, we are going to make these trinomials be perfect square trinomials. And if you remember, a perfect square trinomial is in this form, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and it factors into a plus b squared, or a minus b squared, depending on if it has a plus or minus sign for the second term. And so if we have something written like this, that's where we can just take the square root from each side. So we are going to force it to be a perfect square trinomial. So to solve by completing the square, we're going to make it be a perfect square trinomial. Then we're going to factor it. And so it's going to look like these, and then we're going to square root each side. So here I have the steps for you. First of all, if there's a constant, you're going to want to move it to the other side. Then you're going to add a number to each side that makes a perfect square trinomial and the key to that is you're going to take half of b squared. Remember b is your middle term if you are looking at ax squared plus bx plus c. b is that middle term. You can take half of it, square it, add it to both sides, okay? Then you're going to factor the left hand side, square root each side, making sure to add your plus or minus sign and then solve it. Okay, we got it, let's do it. The first thing we want to look at is, you know, what does my c value have to be to be a perfect square? And so on that last slide, I had said we want to take half of b and square it. And if you remember, this is a, b, and c. Okay, so we're going to take half of b. Well, half of b is three halves, and we're going to square it. This is why we use fractions here, nine-fourths. So c equals 9 fourths is going to make it a perfect square trinomial. So write the expression as the square of a binomial. Okay. So here's my expression. Now, we're usually not used to writing or to factoring with fractions, but here we go. x minus, it's going to be half of 3, which is 3 halves squared. That is this trinomial factored. It's actually this trinomial over here factored. Okay? To show you that that's the correct answer, if you need to, do x minus 3 halves times x minus 3 halves. It's going to be x squared minus 3 halves x minus 3 halves x plus 9 fourths. And the two negative 3 halves add up to be negative 3. Okay, so let's actually get down to solving. So you might want to check, uh, is this already a perfect square? And if it is, you're going to be able, first of all, this has to be a 1. Okay, make sure a is 1. Um, if you take half a 6, which would be 3, and you square it, which is 9, the question is, is this number 9? And no, it's not. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to follow your steps. And step number one said move the constant to the other side. So we're going to go ahead and move the 8 to the other side. And we're going to leave a gap where the 8 was. All right. And so that gap is to get the number, the c value, that makes a perfect square. And so we already said we're going to take half of 6, which is 3, and square it, which is 9. And we're going to add 9 to both sides. All right, next step, factor the left-hand side. This is x minus 3 squared. Perfect square trinomials are easy to factor because you're taking half of that term right there. 
x minus 3 squared. If you need to make sure you did it right, do x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 17. Okay, just simplify that right-hand side. Next step, we are square rooting both sides. This gives us x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 17. And we're going to add 3, and the square root of 17 does not reduce, so it's just 3 plus or minus the square root of 17. There we go. So let's try that again. Alright, so your first question might be, is this a perfect square? Well, half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, is this number 4? It's not, so this is not a perfect square. So you're going to start by adding 1 to both sides, move C to the other side. We're going to leave a gap. So we just determined we had to add 4 because that is half of B, which, which 4, half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. We're adding 4 to both sides. We're going to factor the left hand side, it's x plus 2 squared equals 5. We're going to square root both sides x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5 and when we subtract 2 to the other side we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. So I did mention on that first problem that a has to be 1 and in this case a is 5 and so if a is 5 or if a is anything else you have to divide everything and so notice I divided the zero also because you can't just divide one side you and just in case the other side happened to be something else so we're going to divide everything by five okay and that might produce fractions at some point and you'll have to deal with it because you cannot have a leading coefficient that's anything other than one in order to complete the square so now we're going to start by subtracting six from both sides by the way, that's where this method uh, isn't ideal all the time because you can get some really ugly fractions when you go and divide by that leading coefficient and you just have to work it out if you're going to complete the square. So I took half of 2, which is 1, and I squared 1, which is 1, and I added 1 to both sides. So that when I factor, I get that. Next step is to square root both sides. And it is a good thing that we've talked about imaginary numbers because this is going to be plus or minus i square root of 5. Okay, And we're going to add 1 to both sides. And x equals 1 plus or minus i square root of 5. So the other thing that we can use completing the square form to do is to write something in vertex form because if I'm going to end up graphing it, vertex form is nice form to have it in. And if you notice, if it's written as this binomial squared here, that really is vertex form. Okay, so how are we going to write it in vertex form? Well, let's write our equation out here. Let's see here, plus 16. All right. To have a perfect square trinomial, it has to be, and I'm, I'm missing this, this third part here. Uh, let's, let's do it this way. x squared plus 6x plus what is a perfect square trinomial? It's plus 9. Because half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So I could write this, x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 7. Correct? Okay. Because that still says 16 there at the end. So then this could be x plus 3 squared plus 7. So all I did was factor that first 3 and left the plus 7. There is this equation in vertex form, so what's the vertex? Negative 3, positive 7. Remember, vertex form is x minus h. So let's do that again. So we would, I'm just going to write out the equation to begin with. 
Okay, and I'm going to look at the first two terms, and what do I need to add to, per, to have a perfect square trinomial? Uh, nine fourths, right? Because half of three is three halves. Three halves squared is nine fourths. So this could be x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths plus, well, 3 total is 12 fourths, so what's left would be 3 fourths. So that would be 12 fourths, okay? So this is going to be x plus 3 halves squared plus 3 fourths. There's my vertex form and my vertex negative three-halves, three-fourths. So here we have a word problem that we can use completing the square to write it in vertex form. This talks about that we have, um, we've researched the height of a pepper plant can be modeled by the function h equals negative point eight eight r squared plus eight point eight r plus twenty where r is the amount of rainfall and h is going to be the height, and how much rain would maximize the height of the pepper plants, and what is that maximum height? And so hopefully you've realized you know, this is a parabola that's going to open down, and so this maximum height is going to be the vertex. And there's a few ways you could find it. You could do your axis of symmetry and find it by graphing. Uh, you could do intercepts and find the middle. But we're going to use completing the square because that's the section we're in. And so then the question becomes, how do I write this in vertex form with a leading coefficient that's not 1? And you have to be kind of careful, but it can be done. So the first thing you have to do is you have to factor out this leading coefficient. Okay, so we're going to take out a negative 0.88, and this is going to be r squared plus 10r and I'm not going to take it out of the 20, so let's write plus 20. And so from here, how is it that you, or what are you going to put in here to complete the square? We're going to put in a 25. So you're not really just adding 25, though, because if you look here, I'm going to write in, the, in let's see here, I'm going to write in kind of a teal color. Um, if I distribute, I get negative point eight eight r squared plus, oh, I missed a sign there. Let me change my sign. That should be a minus. So that's going to be a plus eight point eight r minus twenty two plus twenty. So remember when you factor, you're not changing it, okay? I've changed the problem. I've subtracted this 22. So to counteract subtracting the 22, I need to add a 22. So then I'm going to look at, uh, going back a step here, 8.8 .8 times r minus 5 squared plus 42. Alright, so I had to figure out me putting plus 25 here actually was doing what to the problem? It was actually subtracting a 22 from the problem. And so to counteract me subtracting a 22, I added a 22 so everything was still even. So there is it in vertex form. My vertex then is 542, which means that on 5 inches of rainfall, we would have a height of 42 inches. All right, there is your lesson. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.